I just got an advanced peek of Google's 2026 smart glasses lineup, and there's a lot to take in. It also tells you what the state of smart glasses is right now. This is all things mobile. During a demo with Google just a week ago, I got a chance to take a look at smart glasses that did some things that blew my mind. One was I used Google Maps to get turn by turn directions and I looked down and I saw the map spread out in front of me. I also got live translation on the glasses that auto recognized the language and delivered it to me. With another pair of glasses that were connected to a processor puck, Project Aura, I was able to see apps all around me, much like Samsung's Galaxy XR or Vision Pro. And I could even use it to play VR games or to do circle to search in the real world and it tracked my hands. What's going on here? Well, it's an explosion of smart glasses technology. And Google right now is at the forefront of a lot of it. But there's a lot of pieces to track because this stuff is not fully formed and everyone's striving to be the next generation of tech that you're gonna wanna wear on your face. The one player that's not in this landscape yet for glasses, Apple. We'll get to that in a moment. But let's see what we know and some of the things to keep track of. Meta is the big player at the moment in smart glasses. Not only do they have the Ray-Bans and they also have the Oakley glasses, but they also have display-enabled glasses. The Meta Ray-Ban displays have a nearly invisible display in them. That shows where displays are going to go. It's a really crisp color display and Google is going to have display glasses like that too. I use them. Single display for next year and down the road, maybe the year after, dual displays. What are they used for? Well, really right now, kind of like a smartwatch. Google expects that it's going to work with the watch on your wrist and your phone notifications to show things like Uber information, turn-by-turn -turn directions. Uh, Meta's already using it for things like Instagram and for a lot of their Facebook type things. Music controls, not really for watching movies, although Google's will be able to play back YouTube video clips. If you wanna use something that has displays for entertainment, like really using it as a laptop monitor, there are plug-in ones, like ones made by Xreal and Veecher. Let's get into that because they're not wireless, but that's another territory that is being explored, including Google making a product called Project Aura, the one I just told you about that's kind of like Samsung Galaxy XR. These display glasses right now, semi-transparent, and you can plug them in your phone, you can plug them in your laptop or game system, and it looks like a big display floating in front of your face. So where could these be going? Well, Xreal is already working with Google with Project Aura, which doesn't have a final name yet, but it's gonna become a real product next year, and I've used it, and it is a similar design to this with a 70 degree field of view, and cameras in the front, two on the side and one in the middle, it does hand tracking. It can recognize things in your environment. It can take photos. It can work with AI. And it can run apps via a little phone-like processor puck that has the same chip that's in the Samsung Galaxy XR. Now, that means it can run a whole bunch of apps, including I play Demio, which is a full VR game using my hands and it can connect with a PC, and it could basically be that full computing companion that you take on the go that maybe becomes the replacement for things like Apple Vision Pro, Samsung Galaxy XR, and Quest VR headsets. But those may come at a price, and they're not going to be everyday glasses, but some people might prefer that. But let's go back to wireless, because there are going to be a lot of smart glasses designed to be worn all the time that can connect with your phone, don't have any cables at all. Meta Ray-Ban display is one of them. There are other display glasses. There are ones like even G2. There's the Ray Neo glasses. There's Rokid glasses. We're gonna be buried in lots of display glasses. What are the differences? Well, some of them go for a lot of processing stuff like the Ray Neo X3, which is kind of chunky, but it has like almost AR type features on them and a trade-off in battery life. Then you have ones that go for really long battery life. The even G2 glasses, really thin, don't have any cameras on them, but they have monochrome displays and they can last over a full day. So it shows that you're gonna have a wide range of things and sometimes people are making trade-offs to go for a smaller size with longer battery life. Kind of reminds me of the way smartwatches were exploring going for a lot of performance or something longer battery life like the Pebble Watch, which is actually making a comeback right now. And the other thing that I'm concerned or curious about is how these will all work with my eyes and yours too because I have a really bad prescription. I have a, like a minus eight, and a lot of smart glasses and a lot of VR headsets don't work with my prescription. The Meta Ray-Ban displays, there are minus four to plus four support. They don't work with my eyes yet. There are others that are coming up with insert solutions. Rokid glasses actually have these little magnetic lens inserts that you can pop in and out with different prescriptions. Clever idea, a little clunky, but it definitely allows it to work with a lot of different people. There are other companies like the Even G2 that are working with a very wide range of prescriptions. This works up to minus 12, 
which I really appreciate. And it sounds like Google is going to be making a wide range of prescriptions for their smart glasses next year, which are going to be made by Warby Parker, Gentle Monster, and Samsung and Google and Qualcomm are all working on those. And they're going to be available in stores in both display and non-display models. I don't know when, but sometime next year. And that's going to really factor into whether you want to wait to get smart glasses or whether you want to get one right now. And let's get to one final thing that I think is more important than all of these things, is how does it work with the stuff you already have, particularly your phone. This is all things mobile. So let's talk about your phone. Your phone is where all smart glasses are connecting. It's like a smartwatch. You're going to be using it to pair and to send things back and forth. And that's limited by how much the OS on your phone supports something like smart glasses. Now, right now, phones don't work well with smart glasses generally much at all, except for if you're using particular companion apps. It's like the very early days of smartwatches before the Apple Watch and before Android watches, when you'd have individual watches with their own pairing that would do very particular things. That includes what Meta's glasses can do. But Google is going to be supporting Android XR, which is this bridge platform that connects to all of Android OS and will allow it to run various apps, including ones that aren't even built for the glasses and should work with your standard notifications and kind of the way that your smartwatch already works and even triangulate. And to use these, you're probably going to end up using more things on your wrist. Meta is already exploring things like neural bands, which uses electromyography, a fancy technology that allows you to do gesture tracking on your wrist. Fascinating, but it's a dedicated device. Other companies like Even have a little ring that you wear that does gestures, but also does fitness tracking. But Google is going to be working with smartwatches to allow some gestures that connect with the glasses. And I think more companies are going to be doing that. And then Google's Project Aura with Xreal has gesture tracking that works with the cameras on the glasses. That requires a lot more power, and I don't think you're going to see that on wireless glasses anytime soon. You'll probably see a lot of that smartwatch triangulation. And do you even need these? Well, that depends on how good the AI services are. We're looking at a lot of AI platforms all trying to be the ultimate thing for you, and a lot of them are a mess. Some of them have some great features. Google's is really rich and deep and they're making you use Gemini on their glasses as the primary AI. Meta makes you use Meta AI. Apple, who knows, when they do theirs, they'll probably be using whatever AI platform they're going to be evolving alongside Siri or using Siri. And that's a limit and a possibility in terms of where these are all going. You don't need smart glasses right now, but in the future, I feel like smart glasses are going to rapidly become something you're interested in. And we're in a 12 month period where that's happening faster than ever.